Hello, good afternoon and welcome to New Forest Morphs. I hope everyone's having a wonderful weekend and enjoying this beautiful weather. It is warming up and uh, I've opened up the doors and the windows just to let the ventilation come through here to make sure everything's nice and fresh. Just had a good cleaning session and we've had a few snakes that have moved up to the adult racks. So today we're going to just have a look at those snakes that are moving up and we're going to do a second look at the growons from the other side of the room which are just over here. And we'll just highlight a few of our beautiful um, hatchlings from last year that are growing nicely. And at the end, I'm going to just give you a summary of our business plans for 2022 with the 40 different breeding pairs that we're projecting and the costs and expenses, a little bit about the cost of running a facility like this and the potential return that can be ploughed back into the investment. So they're the three things we're going to cover today. But to start us off, why don't we have a quick look at the two growns I've moved up and a couple of other growns that I'm going to show you. So join me please and let's have a little look and see what we've got going on here. So the first ones I've moved up was the ivory male, which is a super pastel ivory. His name is Alpha. And let's have a little wee look at him. There's his new home. He weighed in at 800 grams and that's the age, well that's the size that we like to move them up. He's got a small hide to keep himself happy, a bigger water bowl so his humidity levels are going to be good in there and more space to grow and you can see how beautiful he is. He's got that lovely yellow line that the ivories have down the, the and black eyes. So they look a bit like bells but they're not and he's just getting used to his new home now but he looks very happy and we will be pairing him up with the Electra as soon as Electra's out of shed. So he's big enough to go now. Electra is up here, she's our super gravel and she's still in a deep shed so I won't go there. Now the other one I've moved up is over here which is Casper and he is a bell. So it's the two boys from last year. He's a Bamboo Mojave 100% Het Ultra male, Casper. And let's see how he's settling in. We need to buy some more bigger bowls but I've given him a medium sized bowl. He likes his new little hide. Let's have a little peek inside. Very, very happy. There he is. So they both look like very similar snakes. He's got yellow going down him as well, which is unusual for a bell. But he's got those deep blue eyes and we'll leave him to settle in. And lovely clean bedding from them both. Check the temps, make sure they're all good. So they're the two ones that we've moved up. And we've also got some breeding. I've put some breeding pairs together today. So Titus, our Mojave Ultra Male, we've put to Jade. And there they are. I only just put them in there. So she's the Phantom. Let's have a little look and see if she's in there. And there we go. They've already made a mess in there, getting ready to breed. And that's a classic breeding technique there. When the female goes up to the corner and she puts her head up, that invites the male on. And Panda Girl, who's just shut out, we've put the banana to her. So, hoping to get one final lot before they go. Let's have a little look and see. I'm going to just put them in there, so I'm not expecting locks. But they're not far off giving us some eggs. So this is a final security lock, really. She's had about six locks from him already, so I think she's got enough sperm in her. But I'm just being extra careful, <laughs> making sure she gets the freshest sperm before she ovulates. So that's the second pairing I've done today. And then we've also got Sienna who was gagging for food today when I was cleaning her because she's building and I've put Elvis our cine pie to her and they're tail to tailing it look so they definitely want to breed I won't disturb them <laughs> they've only been in about half an hour so we leave them to it um, and I think the only other one I've got now is Jupiter she's the other one I've put the clown boy to her she's a 100% heck clown and she's a butter and he's pretty good at breeding so, oh look, look, tails up in the air. They've locked, they've <laughs> already looked. Look how quick that was, that was very, very quick. Half an hour he's locked, that's how clever that he is. And she's looking stunning, so we won't disturb them. We'll just let them get on with their breeding. But they're definitely up for it. So there we go, so that's the um, breeding for today. And then the other thing I was gonna show you is I was just gonna show you how some of our um, hatchlings are doing from last year because they're almost ready to go up um, from this side but before I do that I'll just show you the two other girls 
that I'm going to be putting up uh, to the adult racks which I showed you yesterday which is this one here is in shed that's 800 and that's bubbles she's a Enchi lesser clown in a deep shed at the moment so we'll let her shed out first then we'll move her up and the good news about this is it frees up space for four more babies to come so this one's in shed as well this is uh, <clears throat> Calissa she's a lesser clown female and she's similar size to Bubbles. They'll both be going up together next week after they're shut out. And that'll free up two more spaces for further hatchlings. So the idea is that we bring on all these snakes, grow them up, move them onto uh, the adult racks, and then that frees up space for the next hatchlings that will be coming. So the other ones that I wanted to show you is our two Mojave Ultramel females that are close to moving up. They need another month, I think. 650 to 700 each. Absolutely stunning animals. And Starburst, sister. She's similar size. Let's have a look at her. Really beautiful. Okay, in fact, what I'll do is I'll take one of them into the light box and just show you how beautiful these girls are. And look how gorgeous. And we could weigh them to make sure we get the weights right. Let's just see how this beautiful girl's doing here. There she is. So, She's about 700 grams. She's about nine months old, almost coming up for nine months old. And absolutely beautiful. And packing on great weight, Jared's doing a great job of feeding her. She's eating rat wieners at the moment and just love her colors. She's having a little bit of a sleep. She might come out and explore. There she is. In fact, she's going into a shed looking at that. She might be moving into a shed shortly. But there she is. Beautiful colours. One of my favourite hatlings of last year. We won't keep her in there too long because I think she's having a little nap. There we go, my darling. Let's plug her back in. Uh, we should weigh her, really. So if I give her a weigh, let's just see what she's weighing in at. I'm guessing close to 700. Here you go, my darling. What have we got? No, she's 572, so she's got a ways to go yet. So she'll be another two or three months before she moves into the adult racks. But she is putting on good weight. She's almost 600. We'll slip her back into her home. So she's got another couple of months in here, which will be perfect because it will take a couple of months for the next set of hatchlings to come. And her sister, Nova, that was Starburst. I think she's a similar weight. She might be slightly bigger. Let's just bring her out and have a look. I think this is the bigger one of the two. Here she is. Let's just weigh her first. Yeah, this is the one I think is closer to 700. So that's what I was getting mixed up. So this is the bigger one. Starburst is 705. So she's a good, good size. Let's have a look at her in the light box. See how she's doing. Absolutely stunning. Really, really beautiful. I love the head stripe. I love the tones and patterns. You see those beautiful burgundy colours that you get when you cross the Mojave with the Ultramel. And lovely bright yellow patterns. They hold the colour really well. And she's going to be a very important part of our future breeding program in the Ultramels and we can produce some future Ultramels with her put her to her father or we could either introduce the dream school project to her and produce some triple heads if you wanted to we could put the dream school into that which could be an interesting long-term project but a stunning animal she's weighing in at about 700 and has the same gentle loving nature as her dad very easy to handle and very very beautiful so I hope you're enjoying her so I'll just zoom in on her again she likes to climb. We won't let her climb too far because <laughs> there is lighting up there and I don't want her to get caught up in the lighting. But she has those beautiful burnt rich tones on her body. Absolutely stunning. You see those lovely orange, yellows, burgundies. Absolutely beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And I'll just hold it on those for you. Just look how gorgeous they are. Really, really beautiful. And those lovely Mojave floating alien heads that add to the beauty of the animal. So I do think it's a lovely combination. 
and I fell in love with the daddy when I bought him, which is over a year ago now. Um, and what a, what a privilege it is to be able to produce a couple of big females. They're really hard to get hold of female ultramels and they're worth their weight in gold. So we've held them back and Jad's done a wonderful job of keeping them healthy and feeding them well. And she's 700, so I hope you enjoyed seeing that was Nova, by the way. Starburst was 6,593. So it's interesting how they both were born at the same time, but Nova's got a healthier appetite. <laughs> now, as part of the same clutch, we also had a Mojave 100% um, hair Ultramel. And this is Cosmos. Now, she looks like she's put on quite a lot of weight. She's close to 500. We won't disturb her. We'll leave her in peace. And she's got a sister that's also Mojave 100% Silky. So it's funny, we had two girls that were Mojave Ultramels and two girls that were Mojave 100% Hair Ultramels and Silky I think is the slightly bigger, she's the bigger one. She's going into Shed and she's about 600 and I'd say close to 600 as well. So give them a couple more months, they'll certainly be big enough to move up to the adult racks. And then we've got the Bamboo Clutch. Now this is Zag who is probably, let's have a look at her, see how she's doing. So she's a good size now. I wonder if she'll come out and let me take her out. She is a bit hissy. She's in shed actually, so I'm not gonna take her out. and let her shed out. I didn't realize that she was in shed, so I'll put a shed tag. We use green for shed tags. And I might spray her down a little bit to help her shed. So let's just give her a green tag. I'm glad I actually had a look at that. I didn't notice her cleaning that she's actually moving into shed. And what I do is I just spray down to give her some assistance. Just do a little bit of spraying on the paper and on her body. It's slightly warm water, same temperature as the rub. There's no shock, they're getting the same warm water on there which helps them shed out. So that's um, Zag, and this is Zig, her sister, who is not in shed. And let's see whether we can weigh her and see how she's doing. She's very much like her mother. And I reckon she's got to be getting close to 500. And again, Jav's doing a wonderful job there. Let's just set the scales. So, see what she's weighing in at. 638. Doing better than I thought. 638. And there you see the Bamboo 100% Hit Ultra Mill. And again, a couple more months, she'll be ready to move up into the adult racks. And she's got the same patterns as her mother, but she is carrying that really important 100% hit ultra male in her, which when we put the father to her, will produce some visual ultra males bamboos, which I think could look absolutely stunning. It'd be interesting, I haven't seen too many of them being made out there, but it'd be interesting to see what is out there. And there you can see how the bamboo just really does look stunning she's just on a bit of an exploration. I love the metallic look to her. We'll zoom in on those beautiful colours, the whites coming up from the belly, on those alien heads. And you wouldn't think that's a single gene. It's incredible really to think that, that is a single gene animal which has got the 100% head for Ultramel with her. Absolutely beautiful. And she's packing on great weight as well, so that's 600 and plus. Let's have a look at her eye and you can see her beautiful stripes on her side and she is got some wonderful beautiful look to her. I love the head stamp. Can you see how it kind of has blushing at the top and it's kind of blushed out a little bit and there's beautiful striking eyes down the side and lovely bamboo patterns that hence gives the name bamboo and I like her very very much indeed and she's beautiful beautiful snake. Well let's put her back and let's see what else we've got on that side that's progressing nicely. Here we go, my darling. Thank you, Zig, for showing off your beauty to us. And well done, Jared, again, for building her up so nicely. So she's got probably about another two months and she'll be ready to move up. So that's those two. Caramac was part of the uh, clutch that we had on the Mojave Ultramel clutch. Now she proved out to be a pure Ultramel so there's nothing else in her other than an Ultramel. So you'll see what the Ultramel looks like and she's eating like a trooper and I'm just gonna see whether I can weigh her and I don't think she'll need a, more than about another month before she goes up. 
that she's got those gorgeous Caramac burgundy colours and let's just see what she weighs, we'll zero the scales there we go zero the scales that will I'll do, I'll weigh her first here you go my darling, see how much you're going to weigh she's 722 and then let's see what she looks like in the light box absolutely beautiful, one of my favourites and that's why I called her Caramac because she's got that lovely Caramac colour to her and she is absolutely stunning got the lovely burgundy head those beautiful floating alien heads with that lovely white Caramac and burgundy shades of orange in there and she's holding her colour beautifully and I think they will going into adulthood and I think that's why the Ultramels are so popular and I'm so glad that we're building up a, a lovely collection of them here and it uh, takes time but it's well worth it let's just zoom in on the colours of her body crazy hooking going on there as well some interesting patterns and she's chunky and beautiful and got that lovely lovely eye about her and she's got a nice temperament like her father as well so really really happy with her and she's very inquisitive and she's one of my favorite hatchlings of last year and she's looking absolutely stunning so really really pleased well done again Jared for looking after her and keeping her beautiful going on nicely and we'll just slip her back and let her have her afternoon rest here you go my darling back you go that's absolutely gorgeous so she's going to be moving up in about a month I'd say around about a month's time so that is Caramac and let me just see if there's any others that I wanted to share with you we've got the fire heck clowns that came from the fire girl last year they're starting to pack on weight so you're looking at about 350 there you need them in peace so they've got a ways to go yet and her sister that's the male, this is the sister here, this is Fiona. Now she's a beautiful looking snake. And again, she's packing a little bit of weight, so we'll leave her in peace. So I think the other ones are, they've got a ways to go yet. Um, looking at what we've got down there, so we've got our vanilla project, we've got the Bongo project, so we've got NASA, female NASA, it's 100% het clown, or 66% het clown. That's the Bongo she's growing nicely so she's doubled or trebled in weight since we bought her she's very very striking though she does like to look for food all the time and then we've got the spot nose 100% heck clown Europa again looking beautiful so we're trying to get spot nose clowns into our projects and she's putting on good weight and then you've got Suzaku who's the vanilla 100% heck clown again we've got vanilla in there beautiful packing on good weight and then this one is the spot nose vanilla 100% het for clown and that's Tess and she's much bigger she's in sheds so I've sprayed her down I'll just show you how big she is she's probably getting on for close to 400 grams and she's eating like a trooper so we'll leave her in peace so that's about the update on the snakes I could show you um, Yazoo who's our albino 100% het clown he's doubled in size since we've had him we're trying to get him ready for our breeding project. We're going to put him to our um, clown that's 100% het albino. So he's a visual albino, 100% het for clown. So that'd be interesting to see how those two get on when he's big enough. And we've got some other het clowns here. So this is a male het clown. See how he's doing. He's fine. So that's about it on this side. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you was my uh, breeding plans for 2022 that I've not had a chance to really look at this in detail with Jared but I've made some initial plans and you might be asking the question why have I done this so early well the breeding plan for 2022 will start in September October this year so we're only six months away and I think it's really important to have some plans going forward in case you need to buy in some backup males or some new males and also to see what the potential is going forwards and what I've done here is I've 
used it to give me some ideas of what we could be pairing up for next year. Uh, bearing in mind some of our sub-adults are moving now up into adults and we've doubled the size of our potential females from 20 to 40 here. So you see on this side, um, let's see if I can just show you here, we've got the females that we've got available. Um, we've got the banana spider, the lesser butter, the bamboo, the cine, the pie, the pastel clown. So these are all our established breeders that I've done all the way down to the first 20, down to here. And then we've got the new ones coming on board, Lavender Albino, the Albino Leopards, the Phantoms in there, Spot Nose Dinka, the Orange Dream Het Russo, the Purple Passion, the 66% Het Pides, the Phantom Pastel Yellow Belly we've got, we've got some 100% Het Clowns that are going to be big enough, we've got some Super Pastel Het Pides, we've got an Orange Dream Yellow Belly 50% Het Pied Girl, We've got a pastel 100% orange ghost pie that's up to size now and we're just waiting for her husband to get up to size. We've got a het rasu fire 50% het pied and we've got a 66% het pieds 50% albanos that are up for size now. We've got a banana pastel girl up for size. The inchy desert ghost 100% het caramel will be there by September. The super gravel is already there so she's in shed at the moment. We've got the dream circle who's hopefully going to be there. She's about 1200 at the moment, so she's not far off. And then you've got the clown, 100% het albino, which she's very close to 1500 now. And we've got the pastel lesser clown, the pastel clown, the 100% het pied, pastel 100% het pied, and 100% pied. So there's 40 girls that potentially could go. And then I've put to them potential males, which I've made a list of war males. Hercules will be our uh, powerhouse boy, he's the pastel. Which I'll just show you where he is at the moment. So he's over here, he's 108, number 108, and he's having a little sleep at the moment. I should weigh him and see how he's doing. In fact, he looks like he's going into shed again. I think he is. Let's have a quick look at him and see what's going on. So there's the stud male that we're preparing for next September, October. And we'll weigh him in at the moment, see how he's doing, see whether he'll be up for it. But uh, he's eating really well, beautiful animal. He's just starting to move into shed at the moment, but he's carrying five genes, which we want to put into our female clowns and het clowns. And we're just going to weigh him now and just see how much he weighs. Just set the set the clown. Let's just set the um, scales up. So I'm hoping he's getting close now to 540 grams, which is wonderful, Jared. So by September he should be close to a thousand, which is what we want him to get up to. He's slightly going into a bit of a shed there, so I'm going to actually put a shed tag on him. And it's interesting to do a double check on these snakes. You pick up things you don't always see when you're cleaning. So I'm going to get a green tag. I'm going to tag that into there. And we'll spray his bedding down a little bit to help him shed. He's at the beginning of a shed, so you sometimes don't always see it straight away, but so warm water over the bedding, a little bit over the snake, and that'll help him shed out, and they'll have a nice healthy shed. And of course, when they're going into shed, it means they're eating and growing, and it's a good sign. If your animals are regularly shedding, it means that that's normally a good sign. Um, but coming back to the breeding plan, I won't go through every single <laughs> uh, item with you. I'll just go through a few projects that are exciting. And, what we do is we have the female and male pair together, then we work out the best desired outcome, and then we work out an average value of the clutch. And you can see each clutch is very prudently valued because depending on the odds and depending on how many eggs are produced, I think we tend to work on four eggs for brand new girls, six for proven breeders, and eight for big girls. And I think if we use on that basis and then we work out what the average clutch size will be giving the odds, and we take a very prudent view on that one so these values on each clutch are very prudent and then we have a backup male behind that so you can see there's the backup male all the way down so there's some really exciting projects going all the way down so potentially the estimated value for 2022 season with 40 girls and this is prudently done and of course not all of them are going to go so you have to discount maybe 20 percent of them may not go um, potentially there's £67,000 worth of value to the clutches if we get the odds and if we uh, hit all those. Now we'll probably hold back about 20000 
of that value for our stock for future breeding. And that means potential sales of about 47,000 is our potential sales for next year, uh, based on those pairings. And the outgoings, just to let you know what we spend here at the moment and what we're projecting to spend. And I'll just show you what we've got here. So food is about 6,600 pounds a year. So it works out, it will work out close to 550 pounds a month to feed all our collection. We could look at breeding our own, but uh, Jared and I haven't discussed that. It's a lot of work. We're thinking about breeding Maltese would be a really good idea because they are quite expensive. And uh, that might be something we might decide to do that might help us with our plans going forwards. We've allowed £100 a month for paper towels and cleaning products. And that will obviously go up as the collection rises. And if we decide to move them across onto different substrate, then that cost will go up. I've estimated that our light heat and power is about £800 a year here. I've allowed £500 for veterinary costs in case any animal needs any treatment. And then I've also allowed uh, shirts and stickers, £500 to promote our business on the marketing side. The miscellaneous costs in there, there's always things that you've got to pick up. Um, heat mats, thermostats, those kind of things that can break down. Racks, we're going to need another four grand's worth of racks. I've allowed that in the forecast. Uh, incubator, we'll need a third incubator, which I've allowed £500 for the build and all the components. Another freezer for the feeding, which cost us £200. The Wi-Fi in here is £30 a month. That's £360 for the year. And let's just see what else we've got here. And then I've allowed for printing, postage and stationery £400. And then at the bottom, I've got uh, our estimated cash flow that we're going to spend on new snakes next year. So there could be another £10,000 of additional snakes that we're going to buy for our collection. Now that's always... Uh, difficult one because that can vary depending on uh, what comes up and what we need but I've allowed 10,000 so potentially if we allow the outgoings of about 25,000 and uh, that's obviously before Jared and I take anything at all we're not taking anything for wages it's all going straight back in the net increase in cash would then give us 21,000 pounds of increase in cash stock would be worth 20,000 that's the whole backs that I've set up here so that's an extra value to the business and then that will give us a total profit of about 41,000 in our second year, which I'll be very pleased if we can hit these numbers. Um, but just showing you how the hobby can pay for itself if you get it right. And obviously we'll see how we go next year. Some of these skills may or may not go, which means there's scope to even reduce that downwards if we get any girls that don't go or the odds are not quite in our favor. Then there's flexibility and scope on our cash flow and on our profit to absorb that and that's important to know that worst case scenario what you know is there enough there just to keep everything alive and going and to invest in some more snakes i mean that would be the bottom line for me but is there also extra opportunity to be able to invest in higher end projects as well so there's the little summary of uh, the plan for 2022 and that will change and vary depending on what's going on i've got to discuss it with jared as well get his views he's He'll probably come up and tell me that there's some other projects that he likes to get into or some other backup mails he'd like to use. But it's worth doing it early because if you see a lack of backup mails on here, now's the time to buy them, to grow them on, ready to make sure they are good to go. So there's a little bit of strategy, six Ps. I hope you've enjoyed that and gives you an insight into how we do things here. And I hope you've enjoyed the grow ons. Thank you very much for watching, supporting us and subscribing. I hope everyone's uh, enjoying their uh, weekend and that, their, uh, that your projects are going well. We've got a lot of girls that are gonna give us eggs soon. So fingers crossed in the next two to three weeks, we should see a lot more action as far as hatchings and egg cuttings. So this is the exciting part where you see the, the return on all your hard work for the year starting to come back and it's exciting and motivating for the future. But it's great to sit down and do the plans and to see what's potentially out there. And of course, 2023, when you've got even more babies coming through the... So you've got a rotation happening here. So every year your hatchlings are going up to sub-adult. Sub-adults, they're going to adults. So the more production you have going, you have like a... Uh, what would you call it? Like a cycle. So there's always things coming in, better genes coming up. And that's the exciting part of the project, that all the hard work that you're doing will pay off. So it's goodbye for me and we shall see you again. Bye bye for now.